as you take the glucose the carbohydrates so they will come and in the first part of the small intestine do a tenon where there are the brush borders present those brush borders will do the metabolism of the carbohydrates and then they will convert that carbohydrates into glucose and will send that to the blood vessel so now when as the glucose enters the blood vessel then you know there are some control centers to maintain a certain level of glucose in the body and everything is maintained in the body in a normal body so in abnormal body then there is a kind of deficiency or a disease so we are talking about normal now then when we will go towards abnormal so normally when glucose reaches the pancreas in the pancreas there are two types of cell alpha and beta the beta cell is responsible to release the insulin first what will happen when glucose reaches the beta cell they will now this is pancreas and from the pancreas beta cells now i have zoomed in this beta cell this is a beta cell so when glucose reaches the beta cell here is a transporter glut 2 transporter present on the surface of the beta cell this glut 2 will enter will transport the glucose from extracellular to the intracellular means inside the beta cell and here we have glucokinase 6 this enzyme will convert the glucose will do the metabolism of the glucose means it will do the glycolysis and after certain steps the atp is produced and this atp is responsible to do its action on this gate noun is atp dependent potassium gate normally potassium is moving out when glucose reaches here and ATP is formed, this ATP, when its concentration increases, then this will block the gate. So what will happen? The potassium will start gathering here, accumulating here. Now, when the potassium concentration increases inside the cell, you know about action potential. When inside the cell becomes more positive, then what will happen? Action potential will generate. So now inside the cell is has become positive due to which action potential is generated. And what will happen? A calcium channel present on the beta cell, it will open due to this action potential. Now this calcium ions through this channel will move, will move into the cell, into the beta cell. As it enters the beta cells, you know here that uh, there are some certain vesicles in which the insulin is closed this calcium will help in the fusion of the vesicle with the membrane then at the end what will happen this insulin will be released from the beta cell then it will target the tissues wherever the tissue is available so then this insulin now insulin is released here and has come here now this is insulin available here this available insulin will find its receptor suppose it has got a receptor on the liver cell so this will come and will bind here will activate this receptor and then what will happen the glucose will move inside the tissues or those cells on which it, this receptor activated so now like this what will happen the glucose from the blood will move to the tissues by means of insulin so insulin helped in the activation and glucose moved due to the insulin's action on the receptor present on specific tissues so like this uh, the blood glucose will become normal now glucose will reach to that tissue uh, suppose this is the liver tissue and there be skeletal muscle tissue uh, adipose tissues and etc so now there it may be any tissue normally so when it reaches suppose it is reaching glucose insulin stimulated the insulin receptors on the liver and glucose moved from blood vessels to the liver so then what will happen to that glucose then that glucose will be converted to glycogen so now this glycogen is available here now this glycogen what will this do now as the time passes so when there is again if the glucose concentrations falls down enough so then now again the glucose is needed a little bit true in the blood vessel so for that recovery or for the uh, helping of the other tissues or the body to give the energy to the body then this uh, glycogen will be used this glycogen will be used so how will it be used by means of glucagon then uh, its uh, glycolysis will happen so then that glycolyzed uh, will be glycogen will be converted into glucose or will be provided to the other parts where it is supposed to do its action it means for the sake of energy production so like this these two hormones insulin and glucagon they will control insulin is responsible to decrease the blood sugar level glucagon is responsible to increase the blood sugar level and insulin is released by the beta cells glucagon is released by the 
alpha cells present in the pancreas so like this they will maintain a normal sugar level in the body a disease due to which the blood sugar level is no more maintained it may decrease it may increase so normally what we see in diabetes diabetes mellitus we see two types of uh, patients type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus type 1 diabetes mellitus type 2 what happens in these cases in case of uh, type diabetes mellitus type 1 there is a decrease in the beta cells approximately 80 percent of the beta cells they die becomes damaged due to some diseases or due to an autoimmune disease those beta cells may damage and uh, approximately 80 percent get damage so then what happens then then uh, there is very less amount of insulin available to do its job because 80 percent of the beta cells have gone now so what will we do now in this case we will provide the insulin injections in order to compensate the insulin means in order to fulfill the concentration of insulin to do enough job means to re to absorb the glucose from the blood vessels to the tissues so like this insulin injection will help in diabetes type 1 and we have type 2 type uh, 2 3 and 4 also we have four types normally we discuss two but we have four type 1 type 2 type 3 is a kind of gestational or gestational diabetes mellitus uh, which occurs in the females pregnant females and uh, fourth type that is called pre diabetes mellitus so in that we we see or we feel some kind of signs uh, symptoms of diabetes so normally we discuss just these two types more often so type 2 one happens in type 2 it is called as non insulin dependent diabetes mellitus as for the name type 1 is called insulin dependent type 2 is called non insulin dependent in type 1 you know insulin is not available because 80 percent uh, of the insulin has been damaged so now in type 2 what happens non insulin dependent diabetes mellitus in this insulin is not required because insulin is available in this what happens in this case the insulin receptors they are not functional so then a disease again we call it diabetes but type 2 diabetes because in this case insulin is present but the receptors are not okay so now what we do in type 2 is our problem is with receptors so we have to solve it so we will use uh, following drugs in order to do the job beguinides noun is metformin beguinides metformin and this is a very important drug prominent drug which is used to activate the receptors in order to do its job means it will activate the receptor then when receptor will get activated so due to this then there will be absorption of the glucose from the blood to the liver so like this blood sugar level will be maintained so then we have another drug that is called insulin secretagogues or sulfonylurease or uh, the drugs used in this class are uh, glimipiride, uh, glipizide and uh, gliburyl uh, like this etc these three or four are the drugs used so what is sulfonylurea is doing is for the name sulfonylurea or insulin secretagogue the mechanism of action of the sulfonylurea is they are just activating the beta cells these the remaining beta cells 20 percent which is remain which are remaining so they will do what they will target these secretagogues means they will start the stimulate the release of insulin from the beta cells like this when the insulin's concentration becomes enough high then again what will happen there are the chances that those insulin will find some active receptors to activate those active receptors and do the job means to uh, bring the glucose from the blood vessels to the tissues like this uh, a kind of level will be maintained and we have thiazolidine die on pygolitazone and rosiglitazone the two drugs which are used to maintain blood sugar so what is their mechanism of action they are also activating the receptors the inactive receptors so when the receptors are inactive they will all again activate the receptor and then what will happen then as you know when the receptor gets activated they will do the absorption of glucose from the blood to the tissue so like this blood glucose level will be maintained and we have got another that is called alpha glucosidase inhibitors alpha glucosidase inhibitors and the drugs used are in this class are acarbose and miglitol acarbose and miglitol they are responsible to do what here they will also maintain the blood sugar but how as you know we studied here earlier we mentioned that uh, in the brush border of the uh, small intestine duodenum they are responsible to the breakdown of the glucose by mean of an enzyme noun is glucosidase glucosidase 
this enzyme is responsible to do the breakdown of the glucose here <clears throat> alpha glucosidase now when alpha glucosidase break this uh, carbohydrate then what will happen then it will be transferred to the, the blood vessel in the form of glucose then again this glucose will in concentration will increase now we got that sir, in the patient in which the glucose concentration is going to increase and this is a type 2 diabetes mellitus so for that sake we don't need enough glucose now because there is no insulin available or there is no any active receptor available to do its job so for that sake we will give the alpha glucosidase inhibitors in order to inhibit the breakdown of the glucose or in order to inhibit the entry of the glucose to the blood vessel so carbohydrates breakdown carbohydrates breakdown is inhibited and glucose is not formed or it is formed very late so a kind of uh, delay is gonna occur now alpha glucosidase inhibitors when we inhibit this enzyme so they are not more able to break the carbohydrates or they will break but it will delay like this there will be the delay in the absorption of glucose so like this a kind of maintenance is observed means blood sugar level will be maintained 